now call on the Attorney General and Minister for Economy, Civil Service and Communications, the Honorable Ayaz Syed Kayu, to deliver his statement. You have the floor, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, I rise to make a ministerial statement on Fiji Airways fleet acquisition and speak once again on Wangabuka financing. Mr. Speaker, sir, I'm going over this process. I'm going over this process yet again for the benefit of the newly self-appointed aviation experts sitting across the aisle from us and outside this room. Mr. Speaker, I know some of you have already uh, sadly cemented yourselves into a political narrative on this particular issue, as you've done with many other things, despite the facts. It's actually a shame because none of these facts are actually political. I'm not sure the members opposite were sleeping through the sitting in February, which I have the hands out here for, then I explain in detail um, the process. Mr. Speaker, sir, let me start with a summary of our aircraft and whether they are owned or rented or operated leased, as they say. Mr. Speaker, sir, Fiji Airways has three Airbus A330 200s purchased from Airbus and owned. Uh, pre delivery uh, payments, PDPs, which are called deposits of 20% borrowed from FNPF and balance of 80% borrowed from a consortium of German commercial banks. The loans are repaid over 10 years. One Airbus A330-300 rented or operating lease from CIT for 12 years who have been acquired by Avalon. Most airlines only own about 40 to 50 percent of the aircraft because of the PDP deposits that have to be made in advance of the manufacture of the aircraft and the residual value risks. How book value tracks against market value, that's the residual value risk. Uh, factor. Two temporary Airbus A330 200s rented from another airline uh, from Etihad for four years, returning them back shortly because of the maxes that could not come uh, through. We expected five maxes. And two Airbus A350 900 extra wide bodies recently uh, rented, operating lease from DAE for 12 years. We also, Mr. Sp uh, uh, Speaker, sir, a narrow body aircraft fleet consists of five Boeing. Maxes, Max 8s, I should say, rented, operating these from GCAS for 12 years. They replaced three previously owned 20 year old Boeing 737 800s. Many of you would have traveled in them, they're very tired. And two rented, operating leased Boeing 737 800s. Two Maxes have been delivered, Mr. Speaker, sir, and three deliveries are outstanding. We have Fiji Link propeller aircraft, two ATR 72 600s, purchased from ATR and owned. 70% financed by FNPF with a 10-year loan. One ATR 72600 rented, operating lease from aviation for 12 years. And four Twin Otter Viking DHCs that goes to Tavuni, Honorable Alam Blavu, purchased from the Havilda and owned 75% financed by FNPF with a 10-year loan. Mr. Speaker, if any of this sounds familiar, it is because we've explained it before on a number of occasions. But as long as members of the opposition make misleading statements to the media, we are forced to continue explaining common acquisition practice in the aviation sector. The decision to acquire aircraft to undertake any fleet modernization program is supported by an independent business model review and the update of the Fiji Airways 10-year 5 plus 5 strategic growth plan. Fiji Airways also, Mr. Speaker, sir, and always follows an extensive, thorough, transparent and rigid campaign with the aircraft and engine manufacturers such as Airbus, Boeing, Rolls-Royce, General Electric, as well as all the other aircraft lessors. In addition, an independent consultancy is contracted to use its specialist tools to analyze every offer received and provide negotiation improvements every step of the way. Fiji Airways has used well-renowned aviation consultancy firms, namely Skyworks and Seabury from the USA. The objective of engaging these consultants is to create competitive tension to ensure Fiji Airways receives the best possible offers. Based on the business model review in 2016 and 17, and later updated in 2018-2019, as well as the updated strategic growth plans, Fiji Airways needed to add two wide-body aircraft to its fleet in 2018-2019. That is to increase fleet from four A330s to six. A wide body acquisition campaign was commenced in late 2017. It was very clear from the onset that this would be a protracted campaign, possibly lasting several years. Here is why. 
Airbus announced their plans to introduce an enhanced version of an A330-200-300 aircraft called an A330-900neo with a 15% fuel saving and were advocating Fiji Airways swap all its fleet to A330-900neos. And Boeing was aggressively marketing its Boeing 787-900s and was willing to consider swapping all the A330s to an all Boeing 787-900 fleet. Fiji Airways' wide-body campaign commenced late 2017 and culminated with the acquisition of two A350-900 extra wide bodies. The option of replacing all the A330-200-300s with A330-NEOs and similarly the option to replace all A330s with Boeing 787-900s was simply not feasible. The choice Fiji Airways ended up with was to acquire two A330-900-NEOs or two A350-900 extra wide bodies. The cancellation by Hong Kong Airlines, because of their own financial difficulties of the two A350-900 extra wide bodies in production, and the offer by Airbus of these aircraft to Fiji Airways presented an exceptional and unique opportunity. The A350-900 extra wide body with its 25% less fuel saving, I should say 25% fuel saving, greater range and payload is way better than any A330-900neo. As a result of further robust negotiations with Airbus and the lessor DAE, Fiji Airways achieved another groundbreaking sale and lease back transaction deal. With the acquisition of two Airbus A350 900 XY bodies, Fiji Airways earned a substantial sale and lease back transaction gain from Airbus. Fiji Airways negotiated and concluded a 12 year lease with DAE for each of the Airbus A350 900 XY bodies with very favorable return conditions. More importantly, Fiji Airways achieved a very exceptional monthly rental for 12 years and for the two Airbus A350-900 XY bodies, which is equal to the monthly rental Fiji Airways are currently paying for the current A330s, Mr. Speaker, sir. Fiji Airways have concluded a very favorable, what we call a total care service agreement with Rolls-Royce for the engines. Those of you who do not know, you don't simply just go and buy a plane with all the engines, you have to negotiate all of this separately. Basically, the airline saw opportunities to make some great deals and took it. This was at a time, of course, when no one predicted COVID-19 pandemic. While the offers were very good, the nature of the deals were hardly exceptional. Most airlines own 40 to 50 percent of the aircraft because of the large, what we call pre-delivery payment deposits (PDPs) that have to be made in advance of the manufacture of the aircraft and the residual value risks. For example how the annual depreciated book value tracks against the market value. If the book values are higher, then it requires realignment. Fiji Airways complies with this best practice, and in any event, we do not have the big balance sheet to finance PDPs for more wide-body aircraft like Airbus A350. The sale and leaseback, Mr. Speaker, so SLB's acquisition of five Boeing MAX 8s was part of Fiji Airways' fleet modernization program to replace the five aged 20-year-old Boeing 737-800 NGs. The MAX 8 is an upgraded 737-800 with more capacity, larger engines, and has a 15% fuel saving. Of course, Mr. Speaker, say it was later revealed software issues led to its grounding with two unfortunate air crashes, one in Ethiopia and one in Indonesia. Mr. Speaker, said the USA FAA and the ESA regulators, or EASA, are currently conducting flight tests to check out the software fixes and that initial revised pilot simulator-based training documentation has already been circulated. Boeing are expecting the MAXs to operate commercially again by the end of October 2020. The two MAXs we took delivery of actually have been flown to Alice Springs because planes, the deserts are the best place to park planes because it does not actually have that level of humidity that can cause the damage to aircraft. Mr. Speaker, so when it comes to acquisition, all airlines have two options. They can purchase aircraft from the original equipment manufacturers, or OEMs, like Airbus or Boeing, or they can rent aircraft from aircraft leasing companies known as lessors. When it comes to leasing of brand new aircraft, the leasing term is invariably a minimum of 12 years. Normally, short-term leasing of brand new aircraft are not even available from any lessor. And in any event, it will not be financially viable to have short-term lease. Short-term leasing of even existing aircraft from existing airline companies comes at an exorbitant price with very stringent and disadvantageous return conditions. 
A good example is the leasing of aircraft from Miami and Milando, as well as from Etihad, a short-term agreement at a high cost. Mr. Speaker, sir, aircraft are not purchased or rented from already manufactured stock displayed in a showroom floor, like a car yard. You don't go to a car display yard. I mean, you can go to a car showroom and buy a motor vehicle. You don't have showroom for aircraft. Whether you rent them or buy them, aircraft are manufactured to the airline specification and manufacture and deliver and delivery, sorry, Mr. Speaker, said manufacture and delivery normally takes over a 24 to 36 month period. In some instances, the aircraft OEMs have much longer manufacture and delivery backlogs. When Fiji Airways acquired the Boeing MAX 8s, the backlog was six years because they had sold over 4,000 MAX 8s. All aircraft have a catalog price and all air airlines normally conduct extensive purchase campaigns to get the aircraft manufacturers like Airbus and Boeing to compete. This culminates in what we call a best and final offer, baffle, and eventually the last and final offer, or LEFO, from both aircraft manufacturers. The LEFO price for the aircraft is the net flyaway price, the price airlines actually pay. The speaker, Mr. Speaker, although the aircraft engines are an integral part of the aircraft, separate negotiations are held with the original engine manufacturers like Rolls-Royce and or General Electric to arrive at the net flyaway price for the engines. The negotiated engine net flyaway price is then incorporated by Airbus or Boeing as the case may be in the final aircraft net flyaway price. In addition, Mr. Speaker, sir, the negotiation with engine OEMs like Rolls-Royce and General Electric includes acquiring and contracting the ongoing engine maintenance support programs such as the TCA or Total Care Service Agreements. The airline is required to pay a TCA amount for every flight hour to the engine OEM. In other words, the origin manufacturer have to pay the money for that to cover future engine overhauls, in other words, like repairs, etc. With every aircraft purchase, the aircraft OEM require PDP deposits also, amounting to around 20 to 25 percent of the catalog price of the aircraft to be paid progressively from the signing of the purchase agreement until the aircraft is manufactured and delivered. On delivery of the aircraft, Mr. Speaker, sir, the balance of the purchase price, that is 70 to 80, uh, 75 to 80 percent, is either paid directly or financed by obtaining a 12-year commercial bank loan. Whilst the aircraft are mortgage is security for such commercial bank loans, the commercial banks often use or also require what we call European or U.S. export credit agency support like equivalent of Exim Bank in the form of payment guarantees in, in the U.S. is called Exim Bank. Pursuant to these guarantees, the export credit agencies effectively promise to pay the commercial banks in the event that the airline or the SPC defaults in making loan repayments. SPCs are come to the special purpose companies. This is very basic stuff, Mr. Speaker, sir. Similar processes exist across other industries where we set up a special purpose company, special purpose vehicle. The commercial banks also require that the country where the airline's business is registered has adopted the Cape Town Convention. Many of you may not know this, but post-2007, we actually adopted the, post, the, adopted the Cape Town Convention. This treaty, Mr. Speaker, sir, facilitates aircraft financing by requiring the country to amend its laws to provide creditors, for example, banks and aircraft lessors, with an internationally recognized set of rights in the event an airline's default or insolvency, and to guarantee the priority of the creditor's claims against third parties, subject to registration on an international register, which is located in Ireland. That's the connection with Ireland. Mr. Speaker, sir, Fiji ratified the Cape Town Convention some years back, which also gives assurance to many financiers and indeed to airline leasing companies, including banks, that we as a country will honor all our obligations in the event that the collateral is called upon. That additional assurance is why Fiji Airways is able to require or acquire, I should say, interest rates which are significantly lower. If we did not actually ratify the Cape Town Convention, or if we did not have a special purpose vehicle, these aircraft would be less affordable for us. Credit agencies normally require a specific financing structure, which includes the aircraft being owned by an independent special purpose company and mortgage to a security trustee who acts on behalf of the credit agencies and the commercial banks until full repayment of the loan. 
The aircraft mortgage is recorded in a register located in Ireland. A third-party corporate service provider is normally appointed by the security trustee to own and manage the SBC, and employees of the corporate services provider act as directors. Honorable Nawai Kula and Honorable Tambuya would know many law firms in Fiji, for example, set up companies with their own people as directors, ready for company off the shelf. Now, Mr. Speaker, sir, and employees of the corporate service provider act as directors and ensure compliance with local corporation laws. This is all highly technical, and it is the normal practice for airlines the world over. The reason that the ECA is required to structure is to minimize the risk associated with enforcing the aircraft mortgages and repossessing the aircraft in the event that the airline defaults in its payment obligations or becomes insolvent. To facilitate this, Mr. Speaker, sir, the ECA financing structure, the right to take delivery of and title to the aircraft is assigned by the airline to the special purpose company, the SPC, so that upon delivery, the SPC owns the aircraft. The SPC then leases the aircraft to the airline, which is through finance lease. And then the airline pays rent to the SPC. The amount of rent that the airline pays is equivalent to the loan repayments that the SPC is required to make to the commercial bank. No amounts are retained by the SPC. Let me say that again, Mr. Speaker, sir. No amount is retained by the SPC. No amounts are retained, Mr. Speaker, sir, by the SPC because it is merely a conduit, a payment conduit. Once the commercial bank loan is repaid in full via the lease payments by the airline to the SPC and then on from the SPC to the commercial banks, the aircraft ownership reverts back to the airline from the SPC. That is why Wanga Vuka Financing Limited is our SPC as part of the aircraft acquisition process. The nature of Wanga Vuka Financing Limited is well documented, but that hasn't stopped it from being misrepresented by politicians and others outside this parliament aided and abetted by the RAG newspaper. I mean, I've seen this every day coming out. Who runs the show? The big Wanga Buka question. Pie in the sky. Uh, Bhiman, uh, Professor Biman, AG, living in a fantasy of a bulla bubble. All this sort of nonsense. Continuous. Continuous propaganda. Mr. Speaker, sir, of course they are happy to regurgitate and be spoon-fed. But here are the facts. But here are the facts. Fiji Airways purchased three new A3 3200s from Airbus as part of an integral restructuring plan to restore Fiji Airways profitability. Fiji Airways obtained a loan from FNPF to pay Airbus the required 20% of PDP deposit. Fiji Airways arranged financing for the 80% balance owing on delivery through a consortium of German commercial banks using the three aircraft as security. I hope everyone is still with me now. Now, a condition of the consortium of the German commercial banks was that, that the financing or the loans had to also be guaranteed by the European Export Credit Agency. This means that if Fiji Airways fails to make a rent payment and subsequently Wanga Vuka fails to make a loan repayment, then the export credit agencies will step in and make the payments to the commercial banks. One of the benefits of export credit agencies support is that the interest rate charged by the commercial banks to Fiji Airways, Mr. Speaker, sir, is far lower than normal financing interest rate, as the risk to the commercial bank is lower with the ECA guarantees in place. Now remember, Mr. Speaker, sir, that is because of the treaty we signed and the fact that we set up a special purpose vehicle. The export credit agencies' conditions that have to be met for them to provide guarantees were Fiji Airways had to pass the credit assessments, Fiji Airways had to agree to the typical ECA financing structure that I've just outlined which is through the SPC. Wanga Vuka Financing Limited is owned and managed by a commercial services provider called Vistra. Vistra is appointed by the security trustee and recently took over from the Deutsche Bank. When it acquired Deutsche Bank's corporate services business, the directors of Wanga Vuka are employees of Vistra. The Fijian name Wanga Vuka was chosen for the SPC to create a unique Fijian link. The SPC Wanga Vuka has granted a registered mortgage of the three aircraft in favor of the security trustee, which is KFW, Epex Bank, which is the lead German commercial bank. This is common practice in aircraft financing. The mortgages are recorded in the register located in Ireland. Mr. Speaker said, basically, we can think of Wanga Vuka as a warehouse holding the aircraft title deeds until the bank loans are repaid. Wanga Vuka is a neutral entity sitting between Fiji Airways and the commercial banks and the ECAs. It doesn't retain any money. It makes no profit. It records no losses. 
None of the people on this side of parliament, anybody outside is a director. Wanga Vuka simply remits the aircraft rent repayments it receives from Fiji Airways to the commercial banks as loan repayments. That's it. The consortia of ECAs, commercial banks, and Wanga Vuka are actually represented in Fiji by an independent law firm of solicitors, Howards. Get Richard and I will tell you and talk to Wiley Clark and get all that information. He is the lawyer representing Wanga Vuka. Neither Fiji Airways, the commercial banks who provide the loans, FNPF, nor the Fijian government have an ownership interest in Wanga Vuka. Mr. Speaker, sir, I've just only got two more pages, if you could let me finish, sir. Mr. Speaker, there's nothing sinister about this. It is a par for the course commercial agreement. I have time and time again requested that the opposition wrap their minds around this commercial ar uh, arrangement and the deal in reality, not conspiracy theories. Now, because this is common practice, because most aircraft loans from commercial banks are supported by export credit agency guarantees, and because most of these guarantees require for securitization purposes, special purpose companies to independently hold ownership of the aircraft until repayments are completed, there are many special purpose companies out there. That shouldn't be fodder for conspiracy theories. That simply proves this is common practice. If all other airlines are doing it, it's common practice. Another common practice is that the security company appoints an independent company with the required expertise to administer and manage the special purpose company. The company directors of Wanga Vuka Financing Limited are also directors of 139 other Irish companies, Mr. Speaker, sir. 32 of these companies are now closed. No matter that is expected when a special purpose company realizes special purpose. Loan is paid, company goes. Vistra Capital Markets Island Limited is one shareholder, which is Vistra Alternative Investments Island Limited. The director of Wanga Vuka Financing since 2016 is one Miss Hardiman, also listed as director of 132 other Irish companies. Again, that is in some conspiracy. Obviously, the fact that Vistra are administrators and managers of 130 other special purpose companies bears testimony to their expertise and the scale and the scale reduces the cost they charge for the services. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, Honorable Tushar always declared he believes that Fiji Airways is a strategic national asset. It is high time he and others actually act, actually act like it. This isn't rocket science. These are normal commercial arrangements employed by airlines all around the world. Nobody should kid themselves into thinking that sitting here in Suva, they are unveiling some vast global conspiracy. In reality, they are simply subjecting the nation to the misunderstanding of how the aviation industry operates. Mr. Speaker, the Fiji Airways is more than any other strategic national asset. It is our most valuable national asset. And through years of foresight, we built Fiji Airways into, uh, we'll build Fiji, sorry, into the aviation hub of the region. For the first time, we have a state-of-the-art aviation academy with a MAX 8 full flight simulator. We have an A330 full flight simulator. Today, Mr. Speaker, sir, there are only 12, 12 installed MAX 8 simulators in the world, in the world. And with the substantial simulator training required by Boeing and the regulators of all MAX pilots since the return to service occurs, there will be an over demand for simulator time. We stand to make substantial profit from our MAX 8 simulator going forward. Not only will our Fijian pilots be able to access the simulators, whenever they want, but also you'll be having pilots coming from all over the world because once simulator comes or the Maxis come on board, it will be a requirement for all of them to access a simulator. If there's only 12 and already had 400 that was manufactured prior to that, prior to the grounding of it, obviously there'll be huge demand. We won't have to send our pilots for the A330 training to Singapore, stay in expensive hotels, spend two weeks, our poor pilots, we've got a time slot of 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. Mr. Speaker, sir. It would seem, Mr. Speaker, that rather than help us set the stage, our comeback for positioning Fiji Airways for success, the opposition are hell bent on bringing our carrier and our country to its knees. During this pandemic, Mr. Speaker, sir, governments worldwide have bent over backwards to ensure that national airlines survive. They realize the monumental economic impact an airline has on a country, in particular on an island nation state like Fiji. Mr. Speaker, sir, and so does this government. We really hope the opposition share that recognition soon. Thank you.